Hello, hello everyone, this is Chaff Commander Coffee here with a new series for Zero AD. So currently I am doing my Zero AD multiplayer commentary series. I have finished my Zero AD introduction and overview series. Today we will be starting our build order series because that was something that people recommended or uh, actually asked for in the Zero AD lobby for the multiplayer and you know just in general. So I'm going to be doing a build order series and we're going to start off by talking about a very standard build order. Something that you might want to look at as sort of a foundation build order for playing in the future. Now I'm going to be playing as the Athenians because I feel they're quite a standard team. Uh, they get a pretty average roster and their buildings are, have a fairly average cost, or at least the most average cost compared to the majority of the other teams. So I'm going to be doing it as the Athenians. Now I'm going to be playing, I was going to play it on a slower speed, uh, but I'm actually just going to play it on normal. I will not be playing efficiently. I'm going to be talking about the steps you should take in the, say, first of five to ten minutes of the game. And then I'm going to be showcasing it. Um, without really that much commentary. I will just be showing it off. Uh, but first, we're going to go into the game, and this is kind of what you would expect as a standard build order for a rated 1v1. So, step one. As soon as you start the game, you should select your town center and build five women. These five women will be going on wood because you need that for building and such. You'll want to select yeah, your cavalry and have them gather yeah. from chickens, you want to select your four women and have them build a farmstead near your berries. Yeah. Once they've finished building the farmstead, they will gather from the berries. Yeah. You want to get yeah. your two men and have them build a storehouse near your starting yeah. wood. Yeah. And then they will gather from the wood. The first five women that pop, just like so, we will also be putting them on wood because you're going to need a lot of that to uh, be able to get all of the buildings you need constructed. You're then going to want to build five women, and they will be built singly. You cannot, uh, you won't have the resources at the time to build them all at once, but you just want five women like so. You'll also, upon your farmstead being finished, click up for wicker baskets. Now this does require you to be a bit better with your timing, because you don't have enough wood to build a house, but you're quite close to pop cap already. So you may need to brute force your workers at yeah, your storehouse. See? Brute forcing is effectively, when you're quite close to the amount of resources yeah. you need, force all your workers to deposit resources and yeah. then build a house. Yeah. You'll want all of those workers to build the house uh, from your wood line, just so that you get it up in time. Then you'll want them to go back onto wood. Yeah, you can see, see we've got our 10 women here now wood cutting. We'll want another five, and you'll have to build them singly as well. Now, if you're being efficient, you should get all this done in time without ever housing yourself. The next thing you want to do is you'll want to select DSD? your two uh, range units. <laughs> oh, apologies. And put them in one control group, DSD? and have DSD? your next uh, your two spear units, and have them in another control group. These are going to be your building control groups. You'll also want to put your town center on a third control group, so that you have easy access to it to make sure you're training enough units. Once DSD? you have enough wood, you'll want to select DSD? your ranged units, since your ranged units will be building the buildings closest to your base. You want them to start another house the second you have enough wood. Yes, then, you'll want to, once you've finished yes, your next five women, have another five, and you should be able to uh, group build these. These five women are going to build yes, your see? first farm. You can see that our scout has just about finished the chickens by the time we start building the women. So you want him to start going scouting around our immediate location. You want him to scout roughly about 50% of the map or up to your opponent's borders. Once you've finished yeah, your first yeah, house with your two slingers, you'll want to build a third one. We'll build that right there. And now these women have finished uh, training, and we'll get them to build a farm. Now, once your third house is complete, you'll probably want to try and get enough wood to upgrade to iron axe heads. 
And you'll also yeah, want to think about yeah, moving dude. your wood line. As you can see, our workers have already finished yeah, our small pocket Bro. of wood. We'll get them to quickly deposit their resources and come build another uh, storehouse. Now, what you want to do before you build your next storehouse yeah, is identify Bro. exactly Bro. where you want to place it. Now, this is very important because in certain maps, uh, for example, we've got a metal mine and a large pocket of wood here. Uh, we also have uh, some berries. So we do want to gather from this location. However, it is on the same side that our opponent will be on. So this is our forward wood line. We do not want to place our women there because they'll be yeah, very uh, susceptible to being rushed and killed. So we have a few options. We have a back wood line here uh, on the left. We have a smaller pocket at the, ver at the very back on the right. And then a slightly larger pocket here. I think I would probably yeah, recommend see? in this situation to build a storehouse Brasso. over here Brasso. and then move your wood line. Brasso. You'll generally want to do that around about the time you finish your yeah, third see? house. Now after finishing your third house, you've got your five women farming and you've still got women berry picking. Yeah, You'll see? want to build uh, another house. Brasso. Brasso. And you should have got your uh, um, your axe head upgrade, and you'll want to train another woman so that your berry pickers can now build a new farm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, see? yeah. Now the biggest thing about build orders really is reducing your idle time. Idle time is not good, and uh, when you see me play this build order efficiently, you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. But basically, you should always be producing units from every building that you can. So currently, we have our 10 women farmers, and we have 15 on wood. We're going to want another 5 women to build another farm, and once we've equaled our number of farmers to woodcutting women, we'll want to train another 5 on wood, and then another 5 to build a farm. Once we've finished, say, our fourth house, we'll want to build a barracks. Now, the barracks is very important for it will let us actually boom our economy up uh, by allowing us to train more citizen soldiers whilst our town centre is also training. Now, because this is our forward wood line, this is probably the best location to build our barracks. Whilst we're building our barracks, we want to take our two spearmen and have them build some houses around this wood line over here. So in case we are raided, we should be able to defend against our opponent's uh, raid. Our women will have a place to garrison nice and quickly. Now because we have 15 women on this wood line, we're going to need uh, three houses just dotted around, ready to accept them. And because we're going to put another five women on this wood line, we're going to want four. Now you won't be able to build them all at once, but just space out the building so you have enough wood uh, to do other things, for example build farms. Yeah. And again, you'll be able to, I will leave a link in the description, or a timestamp or whatever. I may not, but um, yeah. Uh, I will uh, I will be doing this efficiently so you get an idea of what it actually looks like when you're trying to play at top uh, efficiency. So after finishing your next five women to go on the farms, you'll want yeah, another see? five women to go and woodcut. Now, because we're building a barracks for this forward wood line here, uh, we'll probably want to put some women on this wood line to improve our gathering rates. Now, they will be in danger of being attacked in a rush, um, but since we're training men here, we should have the majority of our men ready to defend this location. Now, because this is a standard build order, I'm really just going with the very bog standard uh, moves you would take. Uh, I would have changed this up a little bit if this was a normal game, because we have some berries here, and I would have got my berry pickers to actually build a new farmstead down here to gather them. Because it would have been faster than going into farming. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have these women build a storehouse, and then go back to cutting wood. Now once this barracks is complete, we will need at least one house in this location, so our women have somewhere to garrison. Uh, so we'll build that, probably not in front of the barracks, I think here is fine. Uh, we'll build it like there. Now this barracks... What you want to do after you've got your 20 women on wood is have another 5 women pop and go on to the farms. Whilst you're doing that, you should, uh, your barracks should still be under construction. Um, but once your barracks is ready, you want your barracks to continuously be training units uh, between your ranged units and your melee units so that you have a good mix of an army to work with. 
Now as the Athenians you get slingers. The slingers require stone, so we're going to need to mine some stone fairly early on. Uh, our barracks also yeah, cost stone, so we will need more stone. Uh, what I would recommend generally uh, in a standard build order is after getting all of your women ready and uh, all of your um, yeah, yeah. on wood and on food, I would have your main town center train a mix of ranged and melee units, build a storehouse near your mineable resources, and get about five on stone and metal at, um, at once. You'll use the metal to get your early economic upgrades, and you'll use the stone to train units like slingers or build more buildings like the barracks. Yeah, what you'll want to do is continuously train units from your town centre and your barracks at the same time, thus improving your population yeah, efficiency. Yeah, Again, I'm not playing it efficiently, so uh, you'll just have to imagine it. Um, but generally speaking, um, you'll have a pretty good mix of units uh, and be able to fight off any raids that attack you, as well as have a fairly solid economy. Now once you have enough women, uh, or once you have enough men actually cutting wood, so for example every five men you get onto wood, you want to take about five of your women off of your side wood line, so the five here, we'll have them deposit their wood and we need them to come over here and build another farm. We'll need this food to be able to continue unit production. Now we don't have enough stone to train slingers, so whilst we're waiting for that stone to come in, we'll just build some hop lights. It's not a problem, so we'll queue up five just to go on our metal. And our barracks will continue to train a mix of slingers and hop lights. I would recommend saving your stone if you are using it to train units like slingers. Save it to put those slingers on your main wood line, because if you're attacked by, for example, javelin cavalry or lancer cavalry, your slingers will be able to support your melee units whilst they engage them, and be able to output some good damage. Yeah, whilst you're doing this, you want your uh, slingers and your um, your hop lights or your melee and your ranged building groups to continuously build houses around your base in a sort of pseudo wall fashion. What this will also have the extra effect of doing is allowing you to properly uh, defend your women from attacks. You can only garrison 20 women in your town centre, so you'll need extra houses to be able to garrison the excess women. So we should have another 5 or so units on this wood line, as you can see we've now got 10, so we'll take another 5 women off of this. And it's important to keep doing this um, as often as you can. Just to make sure you have plenty of food coming in and you're never short on resources. It doesn't really matter if it's placed um, with maximum efficiency in mind, but it is nice to get that sorted. Now, once you've got your five miners on metal and stone, you want to start thinking about where you will build your second wood line. Probably over here. It's nice and safe there, and we won't need too many units to cut that down, so we'll train, say, four, four or six units to start on that wood line. We'll have our builders go over there and build a house. As you can see, with about 10 houses, you already have enough population cap for the 10 minute mark. Generally speaking, if you're playing efficiently, you should have about between 80 and 120 people by the 10 minute mark, with just the one barracks and your town centre constantly producing units. You'll get to see the more accurate timings of how things work uh, once I actually play it through efficiently. So I think we can take these women off of wood now, and we'll get them to build another farm. Because we have these men over here, currently doing that. These pikemen can uh, stop doing uh, wood cutting, they need to do some building for us. Now because we are training slingers, we won't be able to build another barracks, but that's fine. In a standard build order, I would suggest you don't build another barracks until you hit age 2. The reason for that is, your citizen soldiers will cost a lot of wood and food. Now the more you're training, the less wood and food you have to age up. You want to hit age 2 by 10 minutes, so you have access to your more advanced buildings and your upgrades. So we'll have these slingers continue to build houses. It doesn't matter if you overbuild houses, so long as you have the wood income to deal with it. Generally speaking, you won't have uh, enough to just continuously build houses, um, so you need to space them out as and when you need them. 
A good idea is to aim to have all of your economic upgrades by 10 minutes as well. So you, that means you want your farming plow. It's a good idea to click up your farming plow as soon as you have women farming. Uh, this will just increase your food gain, which is very important. Yes, yeah, Steve. Your mining upgrades, you can save them until you start getting your five men mining metal and stone. But since we do have them, we will click yeah, them up. And the wicker baskets upgrade is generally the last one you will get. Um, simply because it costs a fair amount of food and wood. And so you'll need quite a large population of farmers and woodcutters to be able to get that. So we'll click that up as well. Now once you've filled up your wood lines that you're, you are planning to work. Generally I would say you need about 10 men on this wood line. It's quite a small one. Once you've pulled your women off there's not that much wood left to gather. So about 10 men over here. This is a fairly sizable wood line, so this might be a place for our second barracks to start trading units. Um, but once we've got about, say, 20 men over in this wood line, uh, we can take these five women back off of wood and have them build our final farm. Now you want to build this as close as you can to houses that you've got prepared for garrisoning purposes, and also near a farmstead if you don't have space around your town centre. This will bring our farming amount to eight farms. Now for a 250 population game, 8 farms should be enough for the rest of the game. With 300 population, you probably want 10 farms, which is 50 women. Your build order should change accordingly, but for a standard 1v1 rated game, where 250 pop cap is a bit more common, um, I would recommend probably about 8 farms. If you find you need more, build a few more women. They only cost food, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, Steve. Once you have the resources and uh, you are continuously training units from your uh, barracks, I would also recommend clicking up to H2. This will give you access to your more advanced economic upgrades uh, and also uh, to the rest of your unit roster and your more advanced yeah, buildings. Yeah. These slingers can carry on building houses as and when needed. And again, you want to form a pseudo wall around your early uh, farming uh, location uh, with houses. We'll probably need some over here. Now if you find yourself getting housed or you need an extra house to protect your women, don't uh, be worried by getting one woman to come off your farm and build a house. In the long run, it may save you a lot of hurt if you get yeah, raided. So generally you should click up to age 2 um, before 10 minutes. Um, it can be quite close to 10 minutes depending on how fast you are and what team you're playing. Um, but generally around the 10 minute mark, or slightly before then, you should hit age 2. Once you get to age 2, or whilst you are clicking up to age 2, I would highly recommend you start uh, positioning your next barracks. It can be a good idea to place a barracks near your mines, so that you can get faster um, miners moving to your metal and your stone. For example, we could have our town centre build units to the stone, and have this barracks train units to the, to the metal. We can also get yeah, another see? barracks over here on this wood line, which we have identified as having some uh, more stone over here and some more stone here. So this looks like a pretty good place for our next barracks. We can then build another storehouse. And don't feel bothered by building some extra storehouses. If you don't have the wood, uh, obviously save on building them. But um, travel time will make a large uh, difference in how fast you gather those resources. So... Um, yeah, don't feel worried about building some extra storehouses just to reduce that travel time. Once a wood line has become yeah, depleted, and you may Drop. deplete your um, your first yeah, wood Drop. line with Drop. your barracks pretty quickly, yeah, um, what I would recommend, for example, we have 20 men here that are not able to cut wood since they've now removed that wood line, is we're going to need some buildings to age up to age 3. Now this will be close to the uh, 10 minute mark or just over the 10 minute mark. And I'll quickly go into some of the next steps you would take. You may decide to build a temple close to where your opponent is going to be. That way you can get your units healed up nice and quickly. By building a temple close to our borders, we can make sure that our borders expand to this next wood line where we can build another storehouse and get some more units um, building there. Since we've depleted this wood line, this barracks can now train units to go onto this metal mine here. We'll train a few there. Yeah, Once we've finished this temple, we may want another barracks uh, to get some more units building onto this wood line. 
you really want to just continuously be increasing your population as much as possible. So let's see that temple get finished. There we are. We can get another barracks there. And then we can build another storehouse there. And get them to cut wood. Now your building groups will probably um, spend most of their time building houses. Uh, not... Um, Yes, not see? barracks, because barracks take quite a long time to train, uh, to train, to build. <laughs> um, but once you hit age two, you'll probably want your smaller building yeah. groups to build your less important yeah. buildings, for example. Not that they're less important, they are very important buildings, but you yeah. don't need them up immediately because you may not have the resources to buy the upgrades from them. So you may want to build a blacksmith and you'll definitely want to build a market. This is more important if you're playing in a team game, um, but for sure, a market is definitely going to be useful in 1v1, so you can trade your excess resources uh, for some of the other resources you may be lacking in. So we'll get a market up there. Um, in a team game, you generally want to place your market as far away from your furthest teammate as you can manage. So for example, if our teammate is in the top corner here, and we have our borders down here, we would want to place our market around this location. Now, your trade line is something that's going to receive a lot of attention in regards to raids. So what I would recommend doing is uh, building some defense towers uh, around where your trade line is going to go. Since this is one of our flanks that our opponent may try to uh, attack us from, it's a good idea to get some extra defense towers down anyway. So we'll build two defense towers here, and if we were going to, we might place the market, for example, just behind the wood line here. That way it's slightly more protected by the men that are working on the wood here. So, that's kind of a basic overview where I'm just going step by step of how you would build your basic standard build order, going from age 1 to age 2 in roughly 10 minutes. You should be looking at having around 80 to 120 population and most of your economic upgrades from age 1. So, let's exit this game. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, without the commentary where I'm trying to play it efficiently. Do excuse me if I make a few mistakes, um, but that's okay. At the end of the day, we're all going to make mistakes. And if you don't get quite the time that you were expecting or the population you're expecting, that's fine. You just need to practice it and eventually you'll get there. So we're going to immediately get our five women. We're going to farm set these berries, have our cab go there, and have these guys come over there to cut wood and build us a storehouse. As you can see, I got my basic orders done in less than 10 seconds. That is really a good marker to tell you um, whether you got that up uh, fast enough or not. Now, it doesn't look like we have too many berries here, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but never mind. Right, let's grab a berry picking upgrade. Make sure we queue up those extra women that we're going to need to look up. I'll put a couple on this tree over here. So we've got our cavalry just gathering from over there. And um, we've got our women starting to cut wood over here. Let's split up our two units uh, into our build groups. Oh. Yes, Let's brute force some workers in. Get some more wood. Come on. There we go. And just keep training those women to get them onto wood. Again, you'll want about 15 women to go onto wood. So we have no idle time in our town centre, and we don't pop cap ourselves. Excellent stuff. Once we've got 15 women on wood, we should have enough food uh, to be able to batch train 5 women to build a farm. So we're going to need another 3 women. Now we have enough wood coming in, we want to get that next house going. Again, place them closer to your wood line so that your uh, women have somewhere to garrison should you get raided. Now let's identify our map a little bit. Uh, can we get our 5th women? soon please if you find you can't batch train the women don't worry just try and brute force your berry pickers oh just a little bit there we go it's it's actually faster to batch train so it doesn't matter if you're slightly off on your time in regards to that 
We're going to pick our Iron Axe Head upgrade whilst we're waiting uh, for our women to train. So if we identify our map, we've got some wood down here. We have some wood to the right here. And then we have two forward woods uh, and one over to the left here. I would recommend cutting here or over here. We're going to train one more woman to just go on berries. Uh, that's a personal preference of mine. Yeah. And now that we've finished that, this cavalryman can go and scout our borders. Our two pikemen have finished their, uh, their job. So they're going to go and build a storehouse there and build another house. They're going to build the house first. We're going to have our slingers build that storehouse. Make sure you continuously train units. We want to get another five women to build another farm. Now we have enough buildings to hit H2. Excellent. Eh? Can we get another five women? We can. You should be able to batch train the rest of your women. Um, for farming and such. Right, the next five women will be putting on wood. And I think we probably want them to start cutting wood down here. Nice and far away from our opponents. And we get another stone mine as well, which is great. These five women have finished cut, uh, gathering those berries. So they can go on to a farm. Let's get another five women. They will go on a farm as well. We're going to place the storehouse as close as we can to the stone and the wood. Should be fine. Now we have plenty of wood coming in. What would be a good idea is to click up the iron plow upgrade. We've already got the iron axe head upgrade. And once we have enough wood, we want to build the barracks. Now we're going to build the barracks. This is a great place because it's close to a wood line and our mines. Let's make sure we get our slingers to build some more houses. Let's get, um, so we've got all the women we need. We're going to need some more stone to be able to trade slingers and uh, also build some more barracks. So we'll get our five workers on the stone. Let's just train them up there. As you can see, our food is a little low, but that's fine because we've queued up a lot of units to train. So we don't have to worry about our town centre for a while. Since we're not worrying about our town centre, we should worry about our scouting. Again, you want to scout about 50% of the map, and then also up to your opponent's borders, if possible. We want to start walling off our, uh, our base using our houses. Get those men queued up to work over there. Now since we started mining, it would be a good idea to start thinking about upgrading some of our mining techs. We can get Wedge and Mallet to improve our metal gathering rate. Once these men have finished this house, they can just build another. We're going to want a storehouse over here. I'm thinking I'll place it right there. We'll build another one over here, probably. By the time we've got our miners, our barracks should be complete. And what I will probably do is have our town centre train units to go down here. And then once they're finished building over there, we will, uh, we will pull these women back to build that farm that we need. Once this house is complete, we will continue to build houses. I'm going to build some over this side, uh, just to keep uh, it nice and spread out. And make sure that our women have some more locations to garrison should they need them. Again, we're sort of funneling, as you can see, our opponent towards our barracks, where our main line of units will be. Let's get another storehouse over here. We'll need that later. 
in our barracks is currently training the units as well, and because I have them on a hotkey, I can quickly check them to see if they're still recruiting. Now I'm going to try and uh, synchronize them just to make it easier on me. So we have our five workers over here, let's pull these women off of that wood line and get them to build another field over here. The, per the placement again doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to make sure it's a little bit more or less there. Now I'm going to want our town centre to start building units to here, and our barracks can continue to train units on this wood line. Let's pull another five women from this wood line. Oh, if I can get five. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just like to uh, try and get them where possible. Yeah, we'll just take you as well. And still there. Keep training the units. DSD. All right, let's build some more houses. I'm going to try and build these houses a little further back in case we need some more space to build a farm, say here. These two guys, um, hmm, what do I want them to do? Might be a good idea to think about where we're building our next barracks when we age up. If you find you have some of your workers being idle, and for example we have plenty of wood now, I'm going to take all these ten women off, and we're going to build another field here. And another field. Ooh, we might have to place one here. Yeah. There's a good job I left space there for my uh, workers. Let's keep trading units. Yes, yeah, Once we have enough stone, I think we're going to need a little more. So what I'm going to do is have my town center just get some more stone for us. Again, this is sort of me playing yeah, the build see? order my way, but um, you can also do it any way you like. Let's get some more pikes. And then we should have enough resources for a barracks fairly soon. Let's grab wicker baskets since we have a surplus of resources. Yes, hmm. And there we go, we can get our next barracks. I'm going to also place this in the front because we have another metal mine we can make use of there. Let's get our pikemen to come back over here and build some more houses on this side. Just to give our women some easier options to garrison should they need to. Now because we have enough resources, we're going to click up. As you can see, we're going to click up by 10 minutes and we're going to have about 90 population. And I had a little bit of idle time because I'm playing nice and relaxed. But it looks good, doesn't it? I mean, your base looks nice as well. So with a standard build order, you get a pretty solid spread of um, resources. You can get to about 100 population in 10 minutes, and you hit age 2. It's not bad. If you're playing extra efficient, you could probably get a little bit over 100 population. Um, and also, you'll be able to, um, for example, uh, get some more upgrades a bit quicker. Generally speaking, that's your standard build order there, in action for you guys to see. Um, it looks nice, doesn't it? Pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to, you can build more barracks earlier on and attempt to boom. But keep in mind, the more units you're training, uh, the slower it will uh, be before you age up. Uh, but you will have higher population to work with. If you want to go for a rush strategy, you may train maybe 10 less women and train some cavalry instead. If you do decide to build cavalry, you can use some of the wood you're saving, because cavalry are generally cheaper on wood cost, as you can see there, only 40 wood, than standard system soldiers, and have them build corrals with the extra wood. Now, if you find you have some uh, good stone income because you're not using it to build barracks or train units, uh, for example, you're playing with Persians, you can use that stone early on in the game, uh, once you hit age 2, to plop some defense towers down or get an early temple. If you find you have too much wood, you can always take a couple of your woodcutters and get them to build some sentry towers. Sentry towers are useful because once, if you get raided, obviously they provide a place for your men to garrison and fire out arrows at the raiders. Um, and also, once you hit age 2, you can upgrade them to standard defense towers. If you have five sentry towers uh, placed around your base, and you upgrade them all simultaneously to defense towers, you can have a very fast uh, age 3 phase which is pretty good. 
but there's plenty of different strategies. I want to make sure that you guys know that this is just a basic foundation. It's a guideline to work with. You really need to be good at adapting your strategies yeah, to whatever true. you might see. Um, but yeah, this is, this is generally what I would consider fairly standard. You get a pretty decent population, a nice, you get an equal population of soldiers to women, uh, and a good mix of melee and range to deal with different types of attacks, or to actually uh, engage in an attack yourself. You get all of your early economic upgrades, which is excellent. Um, it really does help your economy be that little bit extra strong. Uh, if you find workers uh, finish a wood line or their wood line starts getting a bit more efficient, you can place another storehouse down if you like, or you just move them to another one. Generally, you don't want to oversaturate a wood line with too many people. I'd say about 20 is a good number for a sort of quite a bulky wood line. For example, if we were to look at this tree line here, you could fit about 20 men there pretty comfortably. Uh, or this tree line here. But once it starts to deplete, you can take some of your men off. Yes, yeah, It doesn't really matter how many, because you always train some more at your barracks and move them to another wood line. Sounds good, huh? Right. Once you've uh, sort of finished the first early 10 minutes, you really need to decide on what strategy you're going to be implementing against your opponent. Would you like to boom up your economy and get more uh, closer to your population cap? Maybe you'd like to go for a fast age three and then get some champions rolling to really give yourself some punch in your attacks. Or, perhaps you've already got quite a massive cavalry and you would like to go and raid your opponent. I think raiding at about 10 minutes is going to be quite slow, unless you have a particularly large mass of them, uh, in which case I'd recommend splitting them into two groups and forcing your opponent to split their um, defense into two different locations. Now, because you don't want to oversaturate a wood line, this is actually useful for when you go to raid. For example, now that I've moved men off of this wood line that is uh, that was oversaturated, there's only eight men defending here. If it got attacked by 20 cavalry, these men wouldn't stand much of a chance. On the plus side, we could garrison some of them inside the sentry tower that we built because we had the spare resources. As a general rule of thumb, I would say you don't want to see any of your resources go above 1,000. If you have over a thousand resources uh, of any kind uh, in the first 10 minutes of the game, you have too many of them. And what you really ought to be doing is thinking how you could spend them. If you have too much wood, then you can build some sentry towers. Uh, if you have too much uh, stone, then you probably built too many miners. Um, the same goes for metal. Unless you're going for a fast age 3, where you need that large surplus of stone and metal to age up, then it's fair enough. Um, if you have over a thousand food, you might want to think about training some cavalry, since they'll be able to use up a lot of that excess food that you have. Um, and if you really feel like it, you can always build 10 extra women or so, if you have a lot of extra food, and just put them on one of your safer wood lines, for example this one, if you feel you don't have enough wood. But do remember, if you are going to put more women on wood, make sure to build some houses around there so they have somewhere to garrison if they're going to be attacked. I'd say roughly one house for every five women. Okay, I think that's the end of the uh, demonstration. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that should give you a pretty good idea of, um, you know, like a standard build order for Zero AD. You get a nice mix of units. Um, you get a solid women population to work your farms. You have a fairly defensible base, plenty of resources coming in of every different kind. And uh, you can start building some more barracks to really ramp up your military production. Uh, you'll hit age 2, and you'll have all the economic upgrades from age 1 within 10 minutes, and you'll be reaching close to 100 population. If you can get a second barracks up sooner, because you feel like you'll be able to actually upkeep that extra um, income of units, um, then you'll probably hit over 100 population without too many issues, uh, which is pretty good. You should find that most people uh, who would engage, like the most vulnerable time that you are in during this strategy or this build order, is probably within the first five minutes. If somebody were to attack you with say four uh, Lancers, if they were playing like Rome or Makedon, they can really pick off quite a few of your women before you have a chance to react, which is why it's a good idea to get those houses built 
near those early wood lines so you have somewhere to garrison because small raids like that can be really problematic um, for your early economy but as long as you have somewhere to put your women it shouldn't be too much of an issue I'd also recommend in the case that you are raided uh, like so it's a good idea not to um, if, if you feel like you have good enough micro rather than using the town alarm to call all of your women back I would recommend actually garrisoning them separately uh, that way your farmers will continue to farm whilst your other wood lines are also working um, as opposed to just having all of your women garrison and your economy just shut down completely in say the first five to seven minutes of the game uh, once you do get those barracks going though you can start training quite a few units uh, another piece of advice I have is wherever possible if you can batch train units you should batch train them I wasn't doing it so much in that demonstration uh, simply because I feel a lot of people they might be a bit slower and they can't gather the resources they would need quick enough uh, to get batch training going at a regular pace uh, but if you are good then I highly recommend that you use batch training for your units it is quicker and as long as your economy can support it it's no problem so I hope you guys enjoyed that video um, the next video in this series will probably be a build order concerning booms and rushes um, so you get a bit of an idea of uh, perhaps a late game strategy and an early game strategy to really force your uh, hand in the game see if you can put your foot in the door and really give yourself an advantage I may also take a look at anti-rush strategies or turtle strategies and uh, later on perhaps more specific ones for example my Cyrus Deep Strike strategy uh, and I hope you guys enjoy and learn something from these build orders um, and maybe use them in your own games if you find that you're looking for a build order and you just don't know what to do you don't know where to start or what time you should expect or what population you should expect I think what I just showed there is fairly standard I wouldn't I would by no means call it top level play uh, no not at all but in a team game if you can manage that you're, you're generally doing a good job so uh yeah anyway it's been me chaff commander coffee thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye